Good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. It's always good to see standing room only. That means there's some interest. Um, as uh, uh, Mark mentioned, uh, the session is sponsored by the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance. The Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance is sponsored by AISI, uh, American Iron and Steel Institute, to promote steel for short span bridges. Uh, the alliance has member partners, including uh, steel producers and steel fabricators and associated industry partners, uh, Wheeler being one of the executive members uh, as a fabricator. What we're gonna start with today is to talk about building bridges with prefabricated steel components. This may look like a pretty typical bridge, uh, may have many of examples that are similar in your counties. What's different about this bridge is how it was delivered. Uh, rather than using conventional design, bid, build, it was uh, handled as a design supply. So the project was sponsored by the Utah Department of Transportation for a local bridge in Axtell, Utah, South Central Utah. The project was developed by a local consultant, Jones and DeMille. As Jones and DeMille put together their plans, they sited the bridge, they sized the bridge, so they did the hydraulic analysis, the survey, all of that typical preliminary engineering. They worked with the DOT to come up with a structure type, and they chose a prefabricated steel superstructure. They did specify that they wanted a cast-in-place reinforced concrete deck, and they wanted a crash-tested steel rail. Now, there were specifics in the specification regarding material, span, uh, material standards, but beyond that, they left the final design up to the contractor and their fabricator. So here is the profile that was provided by the consulting engineer uh, designating the position of the bridge and some of the general requirements. But ultimately, the plan, final plans were developed by the fabricator. In this case, it was Wheeler. So we took those parameters as well as what was spelled out in the specification, and we developed the final bridge plan. One of the advantages to that is we could use the details that we wanted to fabricate as well as what the contractor wanted to put together. And so we coordinated with the installing contractor, Gerber Construction, to detail our bridge to be uh, in line with how he wanted to fabricate. So we came up with a cross section that had four beams, and the beams were detailed to be shipped in pairs or in tandem. So we had welded diaphragms that connected the beam pairs and a field bolted diaphragm that connected the two tandems. And then we used typical details for a cast in place concrete deck. And then we chose a crash tested, uh, commonly referred to as an M rail. Those people from Wisconsin that are in the audience will recognize this. We did take it right out of the Wisconsin standards, although I believe it was originated in Maryland. And that was then bolted into the concrete deck after it was poured. So with those details, we finished our plans, sealed them, submitted them for review, and then once they were reviewed, we were released for fabrication. So we were procured the steel, steel beams, brought them to our facility, and then proceeded to gang them into tandem. The bridge was on a grade, uh, so there was um, uh, a little bit of a complex layout in terms of establishing the finished elevations for the bridge bearings and I think the bridge was slightly skewed. Uh, so then we had to lay out the skew of the beams. But we were able to lay that out in our shop and then start adding the diaphragms. So we welded those diaphragms in to create the beam pairs. Here's a, detail, or a shot of after the bridges, uh, the tandems were finished, I took this picture of the bolted stub for the diaphragms that are gonna connect the two tandems. The contractor instructed us to shop install the shear studs, and then the entire assembly was sandblasted to promote even weathering. Uh, the specification did call for the beams to be weathering and the railing to be galvanized. So the beam pairs were then uh, shipped in on two trucks. All of the miscellaneous items, the uh, associated hardware that we had, and the diaphragm beams were loaded between the beam pairs on the same truck so we shipped all four beams out in two truckloads. One thing to note uh, that, that we had to learn, we had not dealt with this before, but Utah asked for an anti-graffiti plate. 
So that if you've never seen an anti-graffiti plate, that's an, what that is. I, as I understand it, that's to promote or to prevent people from walking out on the beam to try to tag it. So once we figured out what it was, we put it on. So then once the beams were prepared and delivered to the job site, we coordinated with the contractor. They had already prepared their abutments. They were ready for delivery. So we had arranged through the Short Span Alliance to document the um, installation. And so they had a video company come out and videotape the installation. So this, these are some excerpts from the installation. And hopefully it runs. If I can get the cursor back here, there we go. Okay, so the beams arrived on the truck. Contractor arranged to pick them off the truck. You can see them preparing the rigging. <coughs> they put on what they described as their horizontal lifelines. So this is for when the workers were gonna be cast, uh, working on the cast in place deck. They swung the beam pair into place, set it down on the abutments. Once they were in place, they marked the holes for the anchor bolts. So we did not use cast in place anchors. We used drill and epoxy anchors. So here they're marking the holes. They shifted the beams to the side, and then they drilled the holes. Once the anchors were prepared, then they moved the uh, beam pair over the anchor bolts. Then they prepared the second beam pair, and there they are lifting off the diaphragm, uh, the bolted diaphragms. And you'll see here they're preparing to bolt those diaphragms to the second tandem. And then once that was prepared, they lifted the second set of beams. <coughs> and they set those in place. They went through the same steps of preparing the anchor bolts. And then once those were finished, they went back and tied all of the beam pairs, uh, or all the diaphragms together. So in a matter of one day, they set all of those beams. Once the beams were in place, then they used uh, conventional methods to form the deck and pour the concrete deck, and then added the railing. So you can see here the uh, results of pouring the concrete deck. That's a, a detail, or a, a picture of the bolted diaphragm uh, in the, down the, the center line of the bridge. There it is at the abutment. Here you can see that anti-graffiti plate and the anchor bolts. Um, again, the details for the deck were conventional. Uh, you could look at doing this with stay-in-place forms. Uh, you could look at doing this with precast concrete panels. Um, in this case, the preference was the cast-in-place deck. Again, we used uh, established details for crash tested railing. So this again was shipped prefabricated and installed and bolted together on the site. So this is our example of accelerated bridge construction, taking a conventional bridge and delivering it faster. In talking with the DOT and the consultant after the fact, they were very impressed with the process. Um, it helped deliver the project sooner it helped control the costs on the front end in relying on the fabricator to do the design details. And they felt like they, overall, the project uh, saved money in using this approach. And uh, the contractor was very complimentary of how the material arrived and estimated that they saved three to four days of work on site in getting the be beams delivered in tandem as opposed to having to set individual beams and then installing the diaphragms uh, for each, uh, each, set of be each beam rather than getting them in the pairs. So this is our example of accelerated bridge construction.